Hello and welcome to how to create bubble wrap in Blender. And we're actually doing this with geometry so we can pop bubbles a little bit as well, make them indent and seem squeezed. So let's get this started by going to the geometry nodes and hitting new and press N to hide that. So this is our start and end. Now, what is bubble wrap? How do we make this? Well, in my eyes, an easy way to set this up is by insetting each face. For example, like this beautiful inset, then subdividing it because that will end up with a circle right here and the connecting phases here, the edges will just get smoothened a little bit and that's fine. Um, and then extruding that, it's out of perspective. Oh my God, there we go. Extruding this to another circle, there we go. And then just smoothening it so it forms a little bubble. And then for each phase, we can define a random value that's going to define whether it's popped or not and it will change values as well. And you'll see how easy this is to set up, really, trust me. So let's start off by insetting. And that's not really a node we can use, we need to do it ourselves. And we can fake it a little bit by hitting Shift A and finding an extrude mesh here. And that's going to extrude all our faces. And we don't really want to extrude outwards. We just want to use the extrude node to duplicate our mesh, our faces, while staying connected, right? So we can just set this to zero. And then we can actually shift a skill elements, skill elements. And that is used to scale all faces, in this case, set to faces um, along their own origins, right? So it's going to either scale this in or out. Um, along its own center. So that's exactly what we need. So we can just set this at like 0.8, but you can tell that once we do it, it's everything scales. Um, so we only want those extruded parts to really um, scale inwards. And you have to look at it like this. So if you extrude a point or a face, then the extruded segments will be your top outputs, right? So this output is going to be your extruded point. So that is how you have to look at that, right? So our extruded faces is what we want to scale down. And that is the top output of our extrude mesh. Okay, so we only want to extrude that top part inwards a little bit. And you can't really see what's going on if you scale inwards until you really go to that wireframe view. And now you can see what is actually happening. Beautiful. So now we can actually just extrude that mesh as well. And we want to extrude this outwards in a top direction only, right? Only that extruded mesh previously, the scaled mesh is what we want to extrude outwards. And so you can now tell that that's exactly what we're doing quite beautifully. So amazing. What's next? Well, let's also set up something that allows us to, do, to define how many bubble wraps we have. This is quite a large bubble, I would say. So we can just subdivide our mesh in smaller segments, right? Just as many as we want. Or you can even set this to subdivide surface if you want this to be smoothened out first, let's say two or three times even, then you can just do that as well. Okay, right mouse, just shade it smooth for now. So now we're extruding this, but it's a little bit far. So let's just extrude this back in something like that. All right, isn't that beautiful? So now we can actually subdivide this subdivision surface afterwards again, and that's going to end up with a nice circular shape. Right, and then we can set the size of our bubble wrap as well with the skill elements here. So everything is already nice and procedural. So now let's say I'm gonna set this at 0.04. Let's say we want some of these bubbles to be popped and pressed. How do we do that? Well, what we can do is after we subdivide this mesh, we have separate, separate kind of faces. And each phase will end up with one bubble because that's what the subdivision surface and extrude mesh here does. So at this point, we can capture an attribute and we want to capture on each phase a random shift A, random value that is set to a Boolean. And the reason why is because we basically want to switch between an extrusion value of 0.04, which is this far, and uh, extrusion value of, for example, zero, which is no, uh, no air, no air in the bubble. So we can actually do that with that random value, storing it per face. 
right? So now 0.5 means half of our bubbles will be popped, for example. And we can use that value that is now stored as a switch input. There we go. And set this to be a float, the top one. And if this is true, right? So if the value is true, I want this to be popped, which means that the false is the unpopped has this extrusion and the true has, for example, 0.01 like that. So now you can see already that if we slide this value, it's going to be popping some bubbles. Right? Isn't that fun? Um, and now we can even take this a little bit further by setting the position of the popped faces to be a little bit inwards and perhaps a bit more random. And to do that, I'm first upping this subdivision level one more time. So we have a bit more geometry to really um, add some noise to. Right. And what I mean with that is if we move this inwards, um, usually the bubbles look a little bit more wobbly, stuff like that. Right. So more like this, for example. And the way we can achieve this it is with the normal direction of our surface. Right. Which always points outwards unless you're normal or flipped. This is the normal direction. And we can actually move our bubble inwards to the normal direction, which means the inverse of the normal pretty much. And what this also shows you is that to create these noisy patterns is that we can just scale that normal direction inwards with a random value to create this nice noisy offset here, right? So this is a stronger normal direction. This is a less strong. This is a stronger again and a less strong again, for example, right? So we can really do that with a set position node playing around with that normal direction. So we can just find shift a a normal vector and we can connect it to the offset. But first we need to add shift a a switch node. Yes, another one set to vector because we want to switch between an offset of zero, of course, for the bubbles that are not popped, which is, of course, the false value here. And for the true, we want this to move in the normal direction. Now, the switch value is, of course, going to be the value we stored before that random Boolean. There we go. And now connect it to your offset. So in this case, it's going a little bit crazy because our normal direction is quite strong. So we can vector math this and scale it a bit down like that. And we actually want this in the negative direction, of course. Um, but right now it's also scaling the face um, besides the bubble. It should only scale the inner part of the bubble, which basically is this top extrusion part, right? Which is, of course, this part of the bubble, this part of the bubble. That is the part that we extrude in that last node. And we can use that as our selection input for setting the position, right? So now only the position of those extruded faces are being set with this position node. So let's say we want to scale this with a random value that I just explained. We can just duplicate the scale node and input a noise texture that we set to factor, right? That is the black and white output. The color output is not black and white. And we scale this with a float. So we can just use the float output, the black and white output here. Now we can scale this up and down. You can see something's happening in those intersections, uh, but not really not noticeable yet. So what we can do is shift A, find a color ramp, for example, to just move these values a little bit closer together so we get really more offset. So black means we're now scaling with zero, which is going to mean an offset of minus zero. And this one is going to be white, which means that's going to be minus 0.04. Right, so now some of these parts are inset and some are not. And you can really define how big that scale is and how rough your noisiness is there as well. And you can, of course, define the resolution with this subdivision modifier as well. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to just because it's fine, I suppose. And then we can set these values to be nice and organic like so. And that is already looking quite, quite cool, I would say. Now, if you want to smoothen everything out again, just add another subdivision surface modifier here and set it to one, right? It adds a nice strength, I guess, in this corner, the, the edge of the bubble. That looks quite interesting to me, right? Something like that. And yeah, I think that's already looking quite decent. Now, let's just add a quick material. Let's go to the shader editor. 
let's go to cycles and gpu go to rendered view and let's just set our transmission all the way to one because it's transmissive plastic um, I suppose, so you can already see that's looking a bit better. Maybe we should add a bit more light in our scene. We can set this to white, <laughs> it becomes a bit invisible. Let's just set this to be a sky texture that always looks a lot better. And let's also make the background film tab, right? Under the render settings, transparent here. And there we go. So now let's set the roughness a little bit lower as well. That makes it more transmissive, it seems. There we go. Maybe we should shade this smooth as well. And we can always just remove a bit of alpha in our texturing as well. All right? Something like that. And what we can do as well is match the IOR with the, the IOR of the plastic, which is polyethylene and it's 1.519. I don't know this. I actually looked it up. So um, you can trust me on that. <laughs> You, I suppose. And yeah, you can now play around with your shader and you have a very easy bubble wrap setup that you can actually pop with this Boolean um, value, right? You can connect your values to your group input to expose them here. Probability of pop bubbles, right? You can increase and decrease. And this works on any geometry, right? You can add a new geometry. For example, we can do a torus, beautiful. And let's rotate this so we can see it better. Um, but the subdivision level here is a little bit too high. So I'm going to connect this to a group input here. And we are going to set the default value. We can press N to open that menu here. We can set the default value of the subdivision level, subdiv level, to be zero, right? The default zero. Just so that when we apply a modifier on our sphere is it this is not a sphere the torus here we hit new geometry nodes and if we now set geometry nodes there it's not going to subdivide it three times first right that would end up with a very kind of <laughs> high res model and now we can just link our materials by selecting the torus holding shift clicking the sphere ctrl l and to link materials and then we have two bubble wrap materials beautiful Right, and then we can control the, the bubble popping and stuff like that. We can control it all. This is now completely popped and looking quite nice. So that is really uh, a, quite an easy way to set this up, I suppose. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave a like, a comment and subscribe. I would enjoy any one of these and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.